a routine landing for a spacecraft that's also an aircraft. This is Space Shuttle, the most unlikely glider the world has ever seen. She's a workhorse that can be used over and over again. Her job is to shuttle into Earth orbit, carry out a mission, and then glide back for a perfect landing, as regular as clockwork. Shuttle has come to mean that a space event is no longer a special event. The only thing novel about this touchdown was a woman. Sally Ride had become America's first female astronaut, and there was an accolade from President Reagan. Welcome home. You were there because you were the best person for the job. Dr. Ride and the rest of the shuttle crews have made spaceflight ordinary, within the grasp of everyone. They've ushered in the second age of space. But a decade earlier, it was a different story. The launch of the Russian space station program, Salyut. While the Americans explored the moon, the Soviets were maneuvering this Soyuz spacecraft towards this Salyut space station. The unmanned station had been shot into low Earth orbit a laboratory to be staffed with cosmonauts who arrived like this by Soyuz Ferry. Monitored by mission control, Salyut taught the Russians how to live and work in space. Later, the Americans did the same. Here we watch from an Apollo ferry as it closes with Skylab. Skylab, like Salute, was a laboratory, a scientific eye on the Earth below and the heavens above. Inside was gigantic, the converted fuel tank of a Saturn rocket, ten stories high. In weightless space, there were no stairs or floors, just a mesh to which were attached the tools of this cosmic workshop, from a solar telescope to a kitchen sink. In all, three Apollo crews were to work and play in Skylab. Then, in a unique display of cooperation, the Americans and Russians pocketed their rivalries for an experiment. It was July 1975, and Apollo craft arrived in orbit. Some hours earlier, a Soyuz vehicle had positioned in a similar orbit. The two space station ferries met and docked. Afterwards, America stopped manned flights. Salyut continued. The Russians tested their cosmonauts longer and longer in space, training perhaps for a future mission to Mars that could last 18 months. And they developed the convenient step-in space suit. By this time, space walks had become routine and quite essential. It was necessary to check how Salyut's exterior was standing up to prolonged exposure in space, an operation directed from mission control. The cosmonauts also checked the airlocks that docked the two Salyut ferries. A robot vehicle named Progress brought up supplies. The normal Soyuz delivered men. This was a visit by a ferry crew. They'd just flown up a fresh Soyuz to be used later by Salyut's long-term crew. And with them came their tailor-made spacesuits. And their space seats. The visitors would take back the craft that had originally brought up the long-term crew months earlier. 
an exchange of logs, and next stop for the ferrymen would be home. As the Soyuz ferry pulled away, the Salyut space station continued its orbital patrol. Soyuz headed for a re-entry trajectory that would bring it down over the great land mass of the Soviet Union. A retro rocket and parachute landing in snowy Kazakhstan. The Russians have perfected the Salyut program, and it continues today, but it belongs to the expensive and cumbersome first age of space. This is the second. April 12, 1981, Cape Canaveral, Florida, and the first space shuttle is underway. It goes up like a rocket, it'll orbit like a spaceship, and it'll land like an aircraft, the all-in-one reusable space vehicle. And this is how it works. At two minutes from liftoff, the spent booster rockets fall away to be recovered later from the Atlantic. At nine minutes, the fuel tank goes. The shuttle's main engine has been cut and the tank recedes like a giant tin can. Into orbit 300 kilometers high and so to work. This was the first time American astronauts had walked in space since Skylab nine years earlier. The massive cargo bay, big enough to accommodate the entire Salyut space station, was what shuttle was all about. With the payload doors open, the crew could deliver virtually anything to Earth orbit, or make a pickup. On the early missions, everything aboard was probed and tested even the astronauts' million-dollar flexible spacesuits, specially toughened for work. The true space ferry had arrived. There was plenty of room inside, much more than in Salyut, whose cramped quarters made one Russian cosmonaut irritable and depressed. Shuttle carries a two-man crew, which, if necessary, can be increased to five. A flight in April 1983 was to eject this communication satellite. It was the biggest and most expensive ever launched. NASA planned to use it as a switching station. It would coordinate information from up to 50 satellites in Earth orbit, as well as from the many missions planned each year for shuttle itself. Another satellite in a spinning launch, and notice the rocket engine at the bottom. The spin was deliberate, a stabilizing trick. The motor, when fired, would thrust the satellite over a hundred times higher than shuttle, to 33,000 kilometers. Shuttle is proving a quiet success. It's even gone commercial. Anyone can buy a mission be it a $20 million satellite launch or a private getaway special costing a mere $10,000. The Europeans are putting up Space Lab via shuttle, the Americans a space telescope. Ultimately, they hope to piece together a space station. Unlike Skylab and the Salyuts, it'll orbit high enough to stay there permanently. In the mid-80s, shuttle will carry aloft the Galileo spacecraft. Fired from Earth orbit, it'll head for Jupiter to probe the mysteries of the Jovian clouds. On its glide back to Earth, shuttle's fuel is entirely spent. Indeed, to have retained even a drop could cause an explosion in the searing heat of re-entry. 
the landing strip and watch the black triangle at this end of the runway. When all four lights appear, shuttle is dead on course. Two, three, four. Who knows, within a decade, the first space tourists may well be making this homecoming. Shuttle is really a prototype, an initial step in breaking with the expensive extravagance of man's first 25 years in space. Shuttle must surely go down as the forerunner of the standard space launcher of the future. As Gagarin's Sputnik was the first space taxi, so Shuttle is the first space bus.